So how was your week? I hope you had a great week. Another weekend, so let's review another very interesting research paper and today we're going to talk about altruism. In one of my previous videos, I discussed whether there is such a thing as pure altruism. And that topic of altruism is very much related to the paper that we're going to look at today. In this study, the researchers were able to trigger altruistic behaviors in birds. So how were the researchers able to trigger these altruistic behavior in birds? And how do they explain this behavior? Let's take a look at this very interesting paper. So these researchers created this device, and here is a picture. It is a device made of plastic or glass. It is transparent, you can see through it, and the researchers can manipulate this device in order to create four different conditions. And these four different conditions are illustrated in their figure. In this first condition, condition A, which is their test condition, you can put two birds into this device. Each bird has their own compartment. This bird, which we call the actor bird, is given a bunch of tokens, so basically coins with a hole in the middle. These tokens can be used by the birds to exchange for food. But this actor bird, although this bird has all the tokens, but this bird is not able to exchange the tokens for food with this human here because this exchange door is blocked. Now in the next compartment, there is a neighbor bird. This neighbor bird has no tokens, but this neighbor bird's exchange door is open. So this means if this neighbor bird had tokens, it could use them to exchange with the human for food. So now the question is, would the actor bird give its tokens to the neighbor bird? And the empirical answer is yes. The actor bird frequently transferred its tokens to the neighbor bird. And the actor bird would actually often do this without having experienced any row reversals. What this means is that the researchers actually switched places between the two birds. And this was done to see whether reciprocity played a role in triggering altruistic behaviors in these birds. But what the researchers observed was that even before the very first row reversal, the actor bird would often help its neighbor indicating that the actor bird's helping pro-social altruistic behavior was not predicated upon an explicit expectation of reciprocity. Because at that point, the birds didn't even know that their places would be switched. So this would lend more weight to the interpretation that the helping behavior exhibited by the actor bird was more pro-social and altruistic. But we're going to come back to this point again because there could be other interpretations too. So that was the first condition, the test condition. Now let's take a look at the second condition. The second condition, or condition B, is what the researchers call the social control condition. And in this condition, the actor bird has all the tokens, but the actor bird cannot use the token for exchange because the exchange door is blocked. And also, in this condition, there is no human and there is no food. The neighbor bird has no tokens and the neighbor bird also cannot engage in any exchange because its exchange door is blocked as well. And also, obviously, there is no human and there's no food. So now the question is, in this condition, would the actor bird give some of its tokens to the neighbor? And the answer is almost no. So it is very rare in this condition for the actor bird to give his tokens to the neighbor bird. There is a statistical difference between these two gray bars, which represent obviously very different levels of token transfers. And this is good. This means that the transfers of tokens that we observed in the first condition or the test condition were indeed done by the actor bird to help or benefit the neighbor bird. We can reasonably conclude here that those token transfers were not done as a game or as an act of playfulness. Because look, when this neighbor bird is not able to use the tokens for any exchange, the actor bird no longer transfers the tokens to the neighbor bird. So this is good. This supports the idea or the interpretation that the token transfers observed in the test condition were pro-social helping altruistic behaviors. And now let's take a look at the third condition. Condition C, or what the researchers call the non-social control condition. In this condition, we have the actor bird who has all the tokens, but it can't exchange them for food because the exchange door is blocked. And in this condition, there is no neighbor bird in the next compartment. The human is there, the food is also there, and now the question obviously is, would the actor bird place its tokens into the other compartment? And the answer here is, well, again, almost no. 
It is rare in this condition for the actor bird to place its tokens to the other compartment. Once again, there is a statistical difference between this and this bar. Now, why is this important? Because if the actor bird did place the tokens to the neighbor compartment, we could potentially interpret this behavior to mean that the actor bird is trying to get the tokens closer to the human experimenter in order to help this human. And I hope you can see it here clearly. The human experimenter had their hand open palm up, indicating that they want the tokens. You can see it in this drawing and you can also see it in this photo. Now, this is important to test because the researchers wanted to know if the token transfers by the actor bird in the first test condition or condition A, whether or not they were genuinely trying to help the neighbor bird or the human. And now, given these empirical findings, we can reasonably conclude that the actor bird was not trying to help the human in the first condition. It was genuinely trying to help the neighbor bird. So now let's move on to the last condition, condition D, or what the researchers called the motivational control condition. In this condition, both birds are in, actor bird has all the tokens, actor bird's exchange door is now open, neighbor bird's exchange door is now closed. There is a human, there is also food. So in this condition, the question is, would the actor bird give his tokens to the neighbor bird at all? And the answer is no. In this condition, the actor bird would directly exchange the tokens with a human for food. So these findings indicate that the actor bird clearly understands the whole situation, what the tokens are meant for, what the exchange door is meant for, and whether or not this actor bird and the neighbor bird are able to engage in exchange. So that is this study. And now let's talk about the interpretations of these findings because there are several interesting points put forth by the authors. So the first interesting point is this. We already talked about the fact that the actor bird would engage in this seemingly altruistic behavior before the first row reversal, indicating that they would exhibit altruistic behavior without any explicit expectations of reciprocity. This is an interesting finding, but does this mean that reciprocity isn't important? The researchers found that reciprocity is important in facilitating altruistic pro-social helping behaviors because the results show more transfers in the preceding session resulted in more transfers in the following session. So this means if you helped me in the previous round and now after our places are switched, I'm going to help you even more. Reciprocity is important. It may not be a prerequisite for the actor bird to exhibit altruism in the first place, but reciprocity certainly seemed to facilitate more such behaviors. So this reciprocity is a potential or at least a partial explanation for why these birds exhibited seemingly pro-social helping altruistic behaviors. The next interesting point is this. When we see the actor bird transfers the tokens to the neighbor bird, we would assume that this behavior is initiated by the actor bird to help the neighbor. But is it so? Because the researchers observed, in some of the cases, it would seem like it is the neighbor bird who is actually asking for the tokens. The neighbor bird would engage in attention-seeking behavior like begging, making noises, or trying to reach for the tokens. So it is a reasonable interpretation that the actor bird's transfer of the tokens may be a response to the neighbor bird's behavior instead of purely being the actor bird's own initiative. So this is an important question, which is why the researchers perform some additional analysis. Even though the researchers didn't find any significant differences in terms of the attention-seeking behavior on the part of the neighbor birds across the different experimental conditions, their analysis show that the attention-seeking behavior on the part of the neighbor birds positively affected the number of token transfers overall. This is logical and this is an important finding because it shows that the more attention-seeking or help-seeking behavior the neighbor bird exhibits, the more likely it is for the actor bird to transfer the tokens. Makes sense. So these additional analysis on the behaviors of the neighbor bird is also useful because it potentially and partially explains why the actor bird would exhibit seemingly altruistic behaviors. So now we already have two potential explanations for these altruistic behaviors that we observed in these birds, reciprocity and help-seeking behavior on the part of the neighbor. And the authors also put forth some other potential explanations in their paper as well. For instance, pro-social signaling is one such potential explanation. 
So basically, by helping my neighbor, I am signaling to others that I am a trustworthy, reliable, and worthy mate. And this pro-social signaling explanation also partially clarifies why we would observe in certain animals and in humans this behavior called competitive altruism, where individuals compete to see who can be more altruistic. So you have shown that you are very altruistic and helpful and pro-social. Well, I'm going to show that I am even more so in order to signal to others and build a reputation that I am the most worthy mate or partner. Another potential explanation for these altruistic behaviors is emotionally based altruism. Neurological studies have shown that the engagement in altruistic behaviors simply makes one feel good. It brings about positive emotions, which in turn facilitate more future altruistic behaviors. I talked about this in my other video on altruism, so please give it a quick watch. This emotional based altruism explanation basically says when you are helping someone in need, it simply makes you feel good. It gives you a sense of intrinsic and intangible psychological reward. And this may be another potential explanation for why we would observe these altruistic pro-social helping behaviors in these birds. So all in all, taken together, this is a fascinating paper. It's got a very clever experimental design, it's got very thorough and interesting discussions of their findings, and of course, it deals with such an interesting topic, altruism, which is something that's just so intriguing and fascinating to me. So what do you think about all this? How would you explain these pro-social helping altruistic behaviors shown by these birds? Do you believe there is such a thing as pure altruism? Leave your thoughts and comments down below. And next weekend, we're going to review another very interesting research paper. So join me again. And until then, have a good week.